coordinating this project and we are working with a group of researchers in this R plus. Uh, regarding uh, myself, I worked. Uh, I started working on environmental conflicts in spring 2014 uh, at ICTA in Barcelona. I spent some months there, and then in September I arrived in Rome, and I joined the research group of the of uh, CIA. And we start we started in October working on this project that is still ongoing. Someone is arriving. Um, so uh, I will show you. I will give you an introduction to the project <laughs> now. Then we will go to objectives and instruments we have in this project. We will talk about the methodology we used in the case selection process and then in the participatory mapping process. Then we will talk about difficulties and solutions we met and we found during the process. And we will try to give you some outlooks about our research and work in the future. And at the end there will be a place for a debate and so we, you will have time to um, ask questions and we, have, we, we hope to have uh, some some space for um, stimulate new works, effective works. So, the name of the Atlas is the Italian Environmental Conflict Atlas that uh, basically is a database in the form of a georeferenced map representing around, initially, around 100 cases of Italian socio-environmental conflicts and uh, the, these conflicts we are mapping date from the 60s to the 2014. It's an atlas in form of a participatory map, so we involve local uh, committees from civil society in the description of each conflict. And once created this database with 100 cases, uh, it will be created a, a online platform that will be a living and open source instrument in the hand of the families. The work comes from the will to study, describe and recount environmental conflicts that have been developing in Italy with the aim of scrutinizing causes that produce them, the mobilization that characterize them and the consequence that they have on the perception of the environmental issues and on the development of studies and uh, uh, policies about all of common goods management and uh, the territories transformation. The Italian mapping project is conceived and implemented by CDCA, that is the document documentation center on environmental conflicts and I will tell you about the CDCA later. And uh, so it comes from the work that CDCA started in 2007 of uh, study of environmental conflicts at global level and it's improved by the experience and work of the EGEL project, of the EGEL project as, and specifically the EGEL Atlas. So, uh, there is a big synergy in the working method methodology that, uh, uh, that ar we arrived to this participatory map. The um, EGEL project, I don't think we have to explain in this situation, you know, but the, the main idea is uh, a collaborative project to bring science and society together <laughs> to catalog ecological distribution conflicts and work towards confronting environmental injustice. So the project involved 23 organizations and activist organizations, environmental organizations, and the CDCA is one is part of this group. And one of the core elements of the project is the JATLAS, that is a global inventory of more than 1,000 cases of environmental conflict spread uh, over the world. The CDCA worked within the EGEL project and helped in the creation of this database uh, with the conflicts they studied 
since 2007 at global level. The Documentation Center on Environmental Conflicts is, uh, it was founded in 2007 by ASUT and the mission is to research and provide information about causes and consequences of socio-environmental conflicts that arise in opposition to specific pro pro projects. The, the initial work of the CDCA was concentrated on the study, collection and uh, docu documentation and also intervention in uh, environmental conflicts in the southern hemisphere, specifically Latin America, Asia and uh, Africa, which have been since 2007 documented and mapped. During the last years, CDCA then started focusing one part of the its investigation and study on environmental conflicts in Italy. And this was facilitated by, by the big network of contacts and collaboration that Cilicia and ASU has on all the, all the country. So uh, regarding, so what was important, so what is important to say is that um, Cilicia worked on, um, on, on and started mapping environmental conflicts in 2007, but with the EJOLT uh, project and the EJOLT structure, we uh, managed to implement a better way and system to, to systematize data and to um, gather information about each conflict. Objective and instruments of this um, of all the working process, we have four objectives. The first one is to give visibility and diffusion to environmental conflicts uh, in the society, in the academic community, in with institutions. The second one is to inform about the present and past conflicts in Italy and about their peculiarities and, this, and with the aim to, um, to stimulate new discussion about what is happening at regional and national level around environmental conflicts. Then we want with this project, we are trying and we are also managing to link up committees and facilitate the creation of networks of mobilization knowledge, mutual education, and sharing of best practices. And finally, but very important, to involve local communities in the co in collection of information on the entire course of the project and in the systematization of data. And this is happening and will happen in two different phases. The actual phases, we are in the collection of the 100 cases, and they are involved, actively involved uh, daily in the, in the description of, of the case and this is leading, leading to um, an, an empowerment of the committees and the second phase will be once the atlas will be launched in uh, spring 2015 probably in the use and appropriation of the instrument atlas by the committees. Regarding the instrument, we still don't have, but we can have soon an online platform as the JAPLAS, but, but specifically um, on the Italian project where the cases are described and mapped and so identifiable geographically on an interactive form. This will help and will give the possibility to search for commodities or search for region, search for type of complex of conflicts within this atlas. And this map serves a, as an instrument of visibility of each case and representation of the distribution of um, ecological conflict in Italy. This system will permit us to uh, describe, analyze, compare and interpret uh, quantitative and qualitative data <coughs> of conflicts gathered and the information <coughs> within the The methodology we use in I divide it into, into, into phases, the case selection process. 
and the local committee's involvement. First of all, what was very important to us to start was to uh, establish and also involve the committee in the, understanding, in the understanding of what we intend for environmental conflict. And so to characterize, there are two um, characteristics of an environmental conflict fundamental to identify it. The first one is the reduction, qualitative or quantitative, of available environmental reserves caused by the imposition of a project that can be by a company, a multinational corporation or governments. And the second one, and maybe most important, is the is the presence of a mobilization, so protest by local residents and or can be also larger opposition movements in the civil society against the project because of the impacts of the project in the territory. And this was very important because of, in Italy we are we have we have plenty of uh, disaster but can, that cannot be identified as environmental conflict because they don't have protests at the, at the, in the territories. The case selection process, I told you, we have 100 cases. We are working on 100 uh, cases and the process um, was the characteristic and the factors that defined. At the end, please. Can you write them down? Um, so, there are different factors that uh, help us to select uh, the cases. The first one is the relevance of the conflict, then the existing national cataloging, um, historical cases present in the nation, the equal categories, and the geographical distribution of conflicts in all the countries. We will see now each category. The relevance of the conflict can be defined in terms of the severity of impacts on the environment, public health and society, or in terms of the relevance of the mobilization, including both the intensity and the outcome of the conflict on the territory or on the project. And these two determinants are not always necessarily linked. So there are cases, for example, in Sicily, the conflicts against the petrochemical complex in Ofgela. Uh, the petrochemical complex uh, was built in, in the 60s, is a big complex and since those time uh, started to pollute it severely the area around it. So the pollution is very, very high, even though there is no a uh, height and a strong mobilization in the area. Another example can be the oil extraction in Basilicata. Basilicata is the, um, the region, the main region where there is oil, field oil in Italy, and is also one of the main field oil in Europe. Is the place where all the Italian but also international company arrive to extract oil, and is a place where the protests are not so high, even though there is, for example, a NIGOS environmental justice organization working there and fighting there. The local population is not um, is not uh, active on these issues. Now this year that the new government uh, launched a new decree to foster um, extraction of oil in the area, protests start to rise a little bit more, but still not as in other case. And on the opposite side, we have example, for example, of, of the Dalmolin case that is um, in Veneto, so in the northern area. Uh, the process again the, against the construction of the military base that a protest that has been um, continuing for years is a big protest and uh, well known in all the country but uh, impacts of course are not comparable to other areas. 
Then we use also very important as well the existing of national cataloging of environmental affected areas, and I refer in particular of the seen areas and the seed areas. These are sites of national interest or sites of regional interest, and are extensively contaminated areas classified in this way by the Italian state that urgently need remediation of soil, groundwater, surface water. They were um, defined and identified by different decrees, but the 2006 decrees um, identify in relation of the characteristic of the site, the pollution, the hazard pollution in the area, the importance of the impact on the surrounding environment in terms of health and ecology, and the injury to local population. This is why we decided to follow also this kind of cataloging. And another one is the sites of regional interest that basically are also contaminated area but under the jurisdiction of the region. So local authorities has to, uh, to, to, to develop the remediation of the area. Here you can have an idea of uh, the scene in Italy. We have 57 seen in reality, some of them were undergraduated to seal, for example, in Giuliano, where we were Sunday, <laughs> the scene was changed to, to seal. We have 180,000 hectares, and so around 3% of the whole territory, and all the Italian regions have at least one scene. The main region, the winner ones, are Campania and Sardinia. And uh, some of the most known and important, are, for example, in Venezia, the Porto Marghera area, that is a big industrial area that we have in the map, or the Brescia Caffaro, also in north, that is a, where, a place where a chemical industry polluted the area, and so on. Porto Torres in Sardinia, Taranto, that means quite known and so on and in the majority of these cases, in some of these cases there are also protests and mobilization and so we decide to, uh, to put uh, these conflicts within the map. Then we follow also the historical cases that are typical in Italy and here so there are cases that date back to the 60s to the 70s Basically, case of big um, disaster, but that also have some mobilization. And here some photos can show us, but this was the protest against the violent um, disaster in '63. Um, after the, the disaster that killed 2,000 deaths caused by the land by a landslide in a big uh, dam that caused a tsunami in the valley. Or, for example, the Zabuzo disaster in '76 that caused uh, a high um, pollution in the atmosphere uh, of all the area near Milano. Or, for example, the protest against the nuclear power plant in Monte di Castro as known the, um, the country in the '80s that end with the, with the national referendum against power plant and has decided to close uh, the power plant. We have not power uh, plant in this actually And the last two categories we follow it to identify conflicts were the EJ categories, so the ten categories used in the JATLAS, um, that are nuclear power plant, waste management, water management, industrial infrastructure, um, projects and the geographical distribution. So we have to, you know, we try to to make visible uh, conflicts in all the Italian regions, of course, where important conflicts exist. Then, arriving to the participatory map and uh, local committees involvement. Um, it was important, as I told you, to the narration of the socio-environmental conflicts for the composition of the map 
uh, is based on the participation of local committees and associations actively involved in the mobilization. This uh, are backs to the practice of the participatory geographic information systems that put together the knowledge of local population to the GIS system. In this way, the, the Atlas recognizes and seeks to enhance the work of local organizations, local committees, uh, local associations, and valorize the know-how that they generate in the area and in all countries. <coughs> How we collect information with the communities, we, we are using a conflict form that is, um, that is sent to the committees in, in different uh, forms and uh, we, so we ask to the committees to fill in the form or at least to help us with interviews. And after this process, once the, the, the conflict form is drafted, we have a final revision step with each committee. So this permits us to control the quantity and also the quality of the information that we put inside. The information collected are, is divided on seven sections, so general information, basic data of, of, about the project, the conflict, then we have, we try to classify the conflict within the 10 categories of each old. So nuclear, minor, all mineral ores and building extraction, waste management, water management. Then we have project details, actors, so scientific and technical information about the project and actors um, from the project side and the institutional side involved in the conflict and the project construction. And then we go in the mobilization part, that means trying to date the mobilization, the starting point, the end of the mobilization, even if the majority of them are not finished, so are ongoing, the groups mobilizing, and the form of mobilization. Then we analyze the impacts on the environment, on health, and the social economic situation of the area. And finally, we go on the current outcome. So what the mobilization produced in terms of outcomes for environmental justice on the status of the project, the current status of the project, the development of alternative proposals, and an evaluation of the conflict, if it can be considered a success or not for environmental justice. The last part that is very important for us is the reference part. So we put, we put with the help of the committees inside each conflict for a part we describe, we link to the sources that we use and also information of other materials, documents, video and photos that can be uh, interesting to someone that wants to uh, know more things and the key information about each content. The status of the project and the working group, we are five researchers and three, three trainees working on this since October and the three trainees since November. On some issues we have special collaborators or environmental justice organization, for example in Basilicata we have this uh, we had this um, um, show I told you before that helped us in the revision and help and help us also in the identification of local families. Or for example, we have the crop that is the Comitat Romano Pública, so the um, local from the committee from Rome in charge of fight for um, public water management that was. Um, highly involved in all the referendum process in Italy uh, to guarantee public management of water and um, that own and uh, try to describe all the conflict on water management. We have 12, around 12 conflict on water management, so they um, are responsible for the description and for contact the specific communities. And then we have, for example, external researchers, for example, Salvatore is helping us 
on about with the, the cases of Campania and others in other cases. So the actual status of the, um, the database is 30 conflicts finalized and revised, so five, okay, finished, and 40 conflicts that have to be revised and uh, corrected, uh, so the last step, the final revision, and 30 ongoing to be received by committees. More, these are, these two are to the 100, and, and we have all new 40 conflicts that we identified that we would like to map, but we are still looking at how, uh, who will uh, map them, so assign these conflicts to the committee. Of course, it's an ongoing project, so we are still working uh, on, we are still on inside all the process, but we already met some difficulties and we try to find solutions then with the committees. Um, this is helping, this, the, um, the possibility to, ch to change a little bit and reprocess the tools and the way to collect information helped us in, uh, in, uh, in building a real instrument that then committees can use. So for us it's very important, it's important that this open process to change a little bit the methodology of work with them in the communication system and also in the tools used to describe conflicts. So may the First, um, the first difficulty was a little bit the first phase uh, caused by the participatory process that as you well know is the process that needs a little bit more time than other kind of process. So the um, identification of conflicts the, with the communities and with specific experts, the um, first contact with the committees was, was not always and not always been e easy to manage and so these take to <coughs> a bit more time and the initial phase also of description of the conflicts. Apart from the, so the participatory process and related problems, in the description of all the, um, the conflicts we um, identified three moments of difficulties. The first one is the reading and comprehension of the conflict form, then the collection of information, and the third one is the systematization of data. So, what I mean with that, the language and structure using the form have sometimes been difficult to understand for the committees. As I told you, we are using the same conflict form used in the EJA class. Um, at database. So um, the first contact with the committees the, in the majority of cases was by email or by telephone, sending them uh, the, the conflict form and the instruction of how to fill in the conflict form. And we met problem in, in not all the cases, but almost all the cases, so it has been essential to make a thorough step of explanation on the structure of the conflict for through telephone or in-person co contact with the committees. And for example, one example with the club that is a commit that is a EJO, that is an environmental justice organization based in Rome, so it was not so difficult to communicate with them, but in some cases of water management conflicts, they had to describe uh, conflicts about remunicipalization of water, and was not clear to them, and we had to really discuss where to focus the conflict. The co if the conflict was on the privatization <coughs> of the management of water, or in the remunicipalization, and this changed all the structure and all the description of the form. So we had to readapt, to rediscuss with them the methodology, the structure, and to focus together how to, what kind of focus give to the conflict. Then in the collection of information, was 
more difficult in um, much, much, much more difficult in territories with level mobilization. That means always low interest of citizen and also low widespread, widespread knowledge of the project. So in these cases, and uh, there are. Um, there are a lot of mobilization in Italy, but a lot of, not all of them are high mobilization. So in these cases, it was appropriate to contact other experts or local authorities or entity um, uh, to understand in depth the, the mobilization. And, but what happened, for example, after this, once completed the, and drafted the, the conflict for, we returned the the information on the territory and to the committee and these um, help, help them and help also the, the, the contact and the relation for them, the use of the atlas as an instrument. And this, for example, is an example in, the, in, in another case in Sicily. In the Gela case, for example, it was necessary to contact other experts and also in the petrochemical complex, Priolo Augusta, where it was absolutely not easy to find. There is not a local committee, so there are some protests and some mobilization, but not an organized committee and not a well-organized committee, so it was not easy to uh, gather information. Or for example, happen, and this happened also in some cases where there was in finding, in um, trying to identify the alternative solution of conflicts, in some cases were not, there were alternative solutions proposed by other actors of the civil society, maybe not the committee, and the committee were not aware about this alternative proposed. So in some cases in general was also important to um, involve or at least to interview other actors uh, of the reality. And another case is, for example, the gas pit pipeline in Villa Maragisti in Abruzzo. We have a, a, a researcher that is helping us, a local activist, and he had some difficulties, even if the mobiliz there is a mobilization, not so high, he, I, he had some difficulties in gathering information about the specific, specific information about the project. And another phase is not simple, maybe the, the biggest difficulty we had with committees was in the systematization of data. That I think can be read as a difficulty, but then a big way to improve and to empower local communities. And was in, the adapt in adapting each conflict to the structure of the conflict for it. And in particular, it was the case for the forms of mobili mobili mobilization, the mobilized actors, and the claims of the committees present in the Jatlas form that were not fitting into or not fitting exactly into the Italian reality. And for example, some nice example can be in, in forms of mobilization. In, in the, the Jatlas, of course, uh, talk about. Um, the claim for rights of mother nature, and this discourse that is not an Italian and European discourse, the rights of mother nature, it was used by some comedies, and so from it was um, it chosen to identify about some comedies. Of course, it was a misunderstanding, a misunderstanding of what uh, right for of mother nature means. That is not the defense of the environment, but this led to. Uh, this debate with them of other kind of mobilization in other parts of the world, for example, you know, for example in Latin America, was there is a typical discourse, and so this helped us in the process of also understanding what we mean for environmental conflicts in, in general. Or another case was the classification limiting for the Italian specific Italian situation. So. Um, occurred with a population characteristic. We defined or we try to identify population involved in the conflict in urban population, um, semi urban population, and uh, um, rural population. <laughs> and what happened, okay, the Italian situation is small country, 
high density and so was not, in some situation, was not clear to identify the population. So it was limited, the structure to the Italian situation. The intensity of the conflict, the intensity of the conflict was a big issue and it's still is a big issue and I hope we can discuss a little bit together about this because how you define the, the intensity of the conflict? We, we had a discussion also by email with Salvatore that <laughs> is not agreeing with something. <laughs> what is the intensity of the conflict? The conflict it can be intense with a, in terms of the quality of mobilization but also in terms of the quantity of mobilization. So a high, uh, a big population protesting against the project can have no, can be defined in intense conflict, but also uh, popu <laughs> a little number of, popu of population that manage to raise big um, awareness about the project. And also, this is the case, for example, for the outcome. There are some conflicts, for example, uh, these years in, the, in Venezuela was the big scandal gossip of the Mose project. It is uh, <coughs> a project to avoid the flooding of Venezia during high tide Maria. And uh, there is, they construct a big impactive project for the lagoon of Venezia and so in Venezia there is a committee mobilizing against the, this big project. The, the mobilization and the process <coughs> remained very in, in Venezia, so locally situated, but they managed to raise uh, awareness and a lot of information in all the country about what what was happening in that situation. Now the Mose, the Mose project is in construction, so no outcomes, but mm, quite spread knowledge of the project and of the impacts of the project in Venezia. <coughs> and in this case, so this led to new reflections and discussion with uh, uh, between us so between us researchers, but also with the committees and so new confrontation of what is, uh, how we define intensity, the meaning of intensity. And in some cases, for example, or what happened also, for example, the Acerra case that we, we, we went to Acerra um, um, the other day, and there are some cases where the, mob the mobilization uh, of been long for years, so years of mobilization. How you define, how you give the intensity of the mobilization if you have a long uh, duration of the mobilization with a high peak of protest and then calm situation. And so in these cases, the idea, for example, was to give a general overview of the conflict and not give a, a an idea or a snapshot, a photo of the insta, of the current or of the moment situation of the conflict. Then, also in, uh, in uh, the systematization of information, maybe the last and the biggest uh, um, problem is the last question of the conflict, for, that is, the answer to the question, do you consider this an environmental success? Yes, no, uncertain, and why? And this was very difficult to us, so in the group of the researchers, but also with the communities, because of course it's very easy to answer what, where a project has been stopped, for example, in Porto Tolle, in Veneto, where Enel <coughs> uh, was trying to convert uh, a power plant into a coal power plant. The project was stopped, and so it's clear for for different uh, reasons. But of course, the mobilization was very important in this case, and so it's a clear is a clear situation of success for environmental success for environmental justice. But in other cases that we well know of high mobilization, but not success on the project, not real and uh, effective success on the project, how we define. So how can we consider and develop mobilization 
that even without stopping the project, succeed in creating virtuous processes of popular consultation, or also valid, valid alternative proposals. And this, uh, for example, in com the campaign committees, some of them managed to, um, to win their battles, but not all of them. But they are proposing, for example, one of the alternative solution is to recycle or to collect um, in a better way the waste. Or there are other cases and other mobilization that manage to draw attention and raise awareness about the cause at national scale. And this is, for example, for the Nota movement, also the Nota movement we talk about European scale. Uh, or the No Moors movement. So are, these are cases that manage to create uh, positive, uh, proactive activity in the local situation. For example, the Nota in the Valley, new ways of participation, new involvement, and a lot of awareness of local population. And also to raise a lot of awareness and also new tools uh, for fighting at lo national level. And this issue, of course, is another, with intensity of conflict, I think, is another issue that we can discuss. It is not, uh, is not easy, and I think it's quite, it's deep, it's quite subjective to identify if, is, if a case is, can be considered a success or not. But of course, there are processes and practice, positive practice, that are, have been put in place in some conflict. Finally, uh, some research and working outlooks that we hope um, the project is an ongoing project. So we still have, we still want, and we are also thinking on what to do with all this data we are collecting. <coughs> so we have the intention to process other data to analyze so, so, uh, social and economic dynamics inherent to environmental conflicts at regional, national level, and also maybe to find uh, also international um, tendency in these dynamics. We would like to develop thematic maps, so to reflect about specific um, things and specific questions. For example, are poorest and disadvantaged Area and disadvantaged areas more most affected, more affected by environmental conflicts, or if environmental conflicts are more common in areas rich, for example, in fossil fuels, and which types of projects have more impacts on population, environment, health. Then, what we would like and we are thinking, thinking how is to create environmental monitoring systems implemented by committees to, um, to have a, a monitored, to have monitored situation in the conflict area. And then we would like also all these, uh, these problems, solution, feedbacks we are having the committees, we would like to have, we, we are thinking how to have an, evalu an evaluation, final evaluation of all the systematization process with committees that can be a good um, occasion also to reflect and to give to them ideas on how to use this instrument, this atlas, for uh, the battle they uh, are carrying out.